still remember this excruciating pain shooting and throbbing through my ear. I couldn't even focus. I couldn't even concentrate. I've never in my life felt pain ever like this ever before in life. Patients are looking for reassurance and people to trust and hope. They're really just looking for somebody just to be with them and they can trust and the person can help them. When I first found out about the diagnosis, I was completely devastated. Who wants to hear that they have a tumor inside their body? Completely devastated and I didn't know what that meant for me. I didn't know what that meant for my life. Bernadette made her way to New York Eye and Ear and specifically uh, to see me since she was seeking expertise in the glome surgery. And at New York Eye and Ear of Mount Sinai, this is an area for expertise for us. The tumor started growing out of my ear. It looked like literally I had an air pod in my ear. The tumor was going into the skull base, down into the neck, to the brain, and coming out of the ear. As it grows, it can affect the hearing, the facial nerve, swallowing, it's a massive tumor. It's not just my ear, this is my brain. I need my brain. And I looked at him in, in shock and in horror and just so pained. She has her dreams that she want to work with her PhD, she want to work with her research, and she want to do public speaking. This could be a, an end of her dream. I could see that in her eye, in her voice. He looked at me and said, do you want a hug? And I just started crying, and I'm like, yes, I want a hug. I gave her a hug, tell her, listen, I, I want to do everything to make sure that I can help her to be a very tiny part of her dream. He looked at me and said, I want you to understand that I am here with you and that I'm going to take really good care of you. He saw me and he heard me and I felt safe. And I knew I had the right doctor. It's a special team that we have. We have all the experts in all these very rare skull-based tumors. We call it the A-team here which included myself, Dr. Jenden, the chairman of otolaryngology, Dr. Bederson, the chairman of neurosurgery, and Dr. Mako, who is a world expert in interventional neurosurgery. And we come up with what's the best option for that specific patient. For someone who has such a large tumor like that, we want to prevent any significant neurologic damage. And although we wanted to deal with this as in rapid of a pace as we could, we also knew that there were several steps to take to take our time and be safe about it. We started the surgery and in my mind is like, all I remember is her, I want to be able to smile. Please make sure that the way I came in, I will leave the hospital and I will be intact. All of that is in my mind as I'm working. I came back when she wakes up and I said, hey, how are you doing? Great was her smile and I could not be more happy. And it had the best medical team. Love you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for for giving me life. They showed me a here at this hospital system that my life is valuable, not just to me but to them. I trained so many fellows and the residents, and, and the first thing I tell my residents: when you look at the patient in the eye, you have to see your sister or your mom or your dad on that chair. Dr. Wana really made me feel like I was part of his family. I wasn't just a patient. There is an unspoken love and consideration that you have when you're taking care of your family. Their success is part of our success. Everyone who worked with you, your whole team, when I walk into your office, I always feel like I'm with family, and that means the world to me. <laughs>
And so I truly am living loud, bright, bold, and bodacious. And I am determined to do all that it is that I need to do.